Sara Dogbazi. Am I pronouncing the name right? Dogbazi. G. 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 Okay. Dogbazi. All right. All right. There's a say um, in the middle. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so I will leave it up to you to uh, do the introduction <laughs> <laughs> so that I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't leave anything out, you know, or pro okay. I, I don't leave any protocols out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So um would you want to introduce yourself and then we can I will mention my name. Okay, no problem. Everything else you want to say, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, in official circles in the uh, the university, I am known as Sarah Dogbaji or say right. is my husband's name. I have a middle name that only people very close to me know. It's called Fafali. Oh, okay, yes. okay, okay. And, and and then when you go on YouTube, you are likely to find Antimansa. Antimansa. That is my name too. Oh, all right. So I mean, <laughs> uh, right away, uh, you you know you know that thing that if was when you come from you know some part of of, of Africa, just the just the mentioning of your name, we we get to know um, the day you were born, uh, circumstances that surrounded your birth, um, the family you're from. Um, how how is yours? How is yours like? Well, um, mine is certain. Um, um, my father called me Sarah okay. for one reason mm. that I look very much like his mother. Oh, whom, yes, and uh, so he holds me dear, like a, um, a, a queen or a princess. All you right, know, that's the meaning of Sarah, <laughs> and that also ties in into his uh, our Christian, um, um. Um, faith Fragment. and so mm -hmm. it is not an English name it is a Christian name okay. uh -huh. so um, and then Fafali means there is peace mm. so there must have been a lot of peace at the time I arrived all right all right the, or maybe okay. I arrived with a lot of peace yeah and then <laughs> I am a third female mm -hmm. let me pamper myself and say I'm a third girl Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Ghanaian culture, you know, uh, uh, the third consistent third girl is a mansa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I am a mansa. All right. And the rest of it is as it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Dogbaji, Dogbaji is my, my, my maiden name, or say is my husband's name. Okay. And usually when you marry late in life, when all your life is almost lived and all your certificates are in place, uh, it becomes difficult to leave your maiden name because it calls for a lot of explanations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So why are you presenting Dogbaji here in your call or say, so it is Dogbaji or say, yeah, and then yeah. answers all the questions. <laughs> okay. All right. Great, great, great. All right. So um, everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, African Live Arts uh, YouTube channel. Uh, what we do is to connect African art forms to individuals, institutions across the world. And of course, this platform is to discuss, you know, some pertinent issues within the African art or maybe African art forms, if that is the right word, if I make a mistake, you know, uh, you can <laughs> correct me. Um, so um, thank you for coming, joining us today. And I'm very excited to have uh, Dr. Sarah Dogbazi um, to Dogba Dogbazi. Dogbaji. Dogbaji. All right. It is not right. an English rhythm. No, Dogbaji. Oh, that sounds Dogbaji. Good. Okay. Okay. Dogbaji. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. So, um, and I have to take, I have to take time into getting it. Uh, if you oh, yes. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I think for some reason, you know, we do that. Uh, do Dogbaji oh, uh, a couple the, of times and I mean a lot for some reason oh. and so that is what is on my tongue oh, uh, so ah uh, yes really yes apologize. yes I know <laughs> I really apologize if oh, it's fine I, you don't have I to apologize it. it's fine huh? <laughs> all right so um today our topic is storytelling in the 
African um, traditional uh, or African society. Um, I would be muting us. Yeah. If yeah, okay, good. Um, so um first of all, what when we say storytelling, what is what would you what is your definition? Let's let's start from there. What is your definition of storytelling? As a narration. <laughs> narration. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then it's, it comes to narration. Uh, okay. It's a so, narration. So, uh -huh. It is communication. Mm -hmm. It is life. It mm. is living. Okay. It is breathing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is singing. Mm. It is painting. It is okay. culturing. It is textile design. All right. It is everything. I wish I could put all this thing together and then throw it back to you again. <laughs> uh, but I got a lot. I got a few things in there. So it is breathing. It is. It is, um, what else do I remember? It is communicating, of course. So let, let, let's, let's take on maybe one or two. Breathing, what do you, what would you, what, what do you mean by breathing? I am saying that um, metaphorically because mm -hmm. uh, if you say, if I say it is breathing, it means that it is the very, the thing that upholds life. Mm. So we tell stories to live. Mm. Okay. So meaning that storytelling is actually an integral part of it is, it is. Um, a group of people. It is an integral part mm. of life. In fact, when you trace the origins of communication, mm -hmm. you will find storytelling there. In mm. fact, the stories were told before they were spoken. Mm. They were before, told before they were spoken. Yes, I, I would say that because if you trace in some accounts, you will find mm -hmm. that um, uh, primitive man started, if that is a good word, I'm not sure, started mm -hmm. communication by drawing. Mm -hmm. What were they drawing? They were drawing, they were drawing their experiences. Their experiences. They were, mm -hmm. they were drawing their faith, their beliefs. Mm -hmm. They are drawing their 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 fears. Mm -hmm. They were drawing they, they were drawing the accounts of their lives. Mm. They were drawing disasters. They were drawing trees. They were drawing mm. animals. They, but they were drawing. They were doing these drawings to tell a story, and at mm. the same time to keep an account of stories. Mm. Okay. So now moving forward into, um, into contemporary terms, uh, let me draw it back a little bit, because of course there might be okay, a time Let me frame. draw it for you. Let okay. me draw it. Mm -hmm. From these drawings, mm -hmm. storytelling now moved into a verbal account. Okay. So people told their experiences, their expectations. Some of them are live are true life experiences. Some of them are fictions. Mm. But all of it is a communication of energies mm. from one person to another. Okay. In doing that, we create society. Mm. We create community. We create fellowship. We create interactions. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, makes life. Mm. That makes the living of the life mm. pleasant, or it it bonds, it, it binds us together, and and therefore our living as communities, as fellow human beings, is made um, uh, easier. But I don't know how to explain it any further. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I'm getting, I'm following the the, the conversation. Um, so um, I, I had, I saw a favorite quote. I, I don't know whether that's your favorite quote though, but I saw a quote of you uh, on the internet when I was, you know, trying to, you know, look, do my little uh, uh, research here and there about, you know, storytelling and uh, things that you've done. And of course, I must say that you've done, you know, a lot of things, you know, in this space. Um, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and put on my uh, T 
theatrical self, if if that's the right word to say. I'm going to try and be an actor right now. So okay. sitting here now, I'm looking from the past, past okay. the present, into the future, and I can tell you the okay. details very the details very, very interesting. interesting. The only <laughs> thing that is consistent is the past, because the past remains where it is, but the present is ever so fast becoming the past and the future even more quickly becoming the present. How does um, this <laughs> write up? Uh, it is called thinking passion... of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> thinking of thinking, all right. <laughs> yes, yeah. so um, I mean, looking at it when i when i saw it first of all i mean the first time and i was just thinking through it it just sounded like just what you just i mean what you explained you know just a moment ago um the past the present and of course the future and so would you want to give a little expansion on on, on this particular one yeah um actually i have grown from that station because mm -hmm. the past is also quickly coming back into the future Oh, okay. So, uh, so we, we keep going back into the future. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. You know, so the, then it spells out the cyclical structure mm. of life. So mm -hmm. that afternoon, I was actually sitting and thinking, and uh, uh, my, my assistant said, he asked me a question, and I, I said, oh... There was some, I can't remember the beginning of this conversation. So mm. actually he recorded me and put it All right. there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So because I, then I said, yeah, so I'm thinking and um, I'm thinking of what I should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. So it is called mm -hmm. thinking of thinking. Thinking of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, All right. I mean, it, so it is, it is, it is to, detailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I came to this realization that really at that point of my life, the only mm -hmm. thing that is consistent, that because he asked me something and then the conversation went into folk art and all these things that I'm very often engaged with. Mm -hmm. And why am I not, why am I always looking back and not, mm -hmm. you know, doing the funky stuff and things mm -hmm. like that. And th that is where this conversation started. So I said, I'm, I'm looking into the future. Mm. And that future will soon become present. Mm -hmm. And the present will quickly walk past me into the past. Mm. You know. And so the one that is ever growing fatter or getting accumulated is the future, is the past. Is the past. Like I said, at that time, as mm -hmm. I was thinking then, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, that the past is quickly siphoning the present and the future. Mm. You know, and so when you're thinking of the future, you cannot think of the future without first looking at the past mm -hmm. to interpret the present mm. and then foretell the future. Mm. You know, so, you know, in ever there's a saying which says, it mm. is upon the old that we build the new. Okay. So there's no point in leaving the past because it belongs to the past and looking into the for the future, you will miss it. Mm. Uh -huh. So this is the background that gave birth to thinking of thinking. Thinking of thinking, <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> okay, okay, so um, let, let's go back into uh, our conversation on, on storytelling. Mm -hmm. And for everybody who is here, again, this is African Live Arts. Um, what we do is to connect African art forms to uh, institutions across the world. Um, so you can visit our website on www.africanliveart.com. And um, Dr. Dogbaji. 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 Oh my God, uh -huh. I have to get this. I have to get those accents in there. <laughs> yeah, so um, so uh, Dr. Dogbaji is also you know, going- everybody, everybody calls me Auntie Sarah and that is fine. Auntie Sarah, okay. But, that you know, is relationship. 
Okay. All right. That okay. is relationship. We thank okay. God for doctor and all these things. That is mm -hmm. a paper requirement for the academia. Okay. Theater arts department and all the school of performing arts, all these ones. We thank God. <laughs> but in this, I, I think relationship is mm -hmm. more, um, um, more uh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> all right. Me, Auntie Sarah. Okay. And it's Auntie fine. Sarah. All right. Good. Good. Great. Okay. Um, so but um, you, you haven't introduced me really. You you said oh, my name, but yeah. people don't know who I am. You, you know, um, so I I I, I, I don't want to, I, I, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to miss any words. Um I know um um, um Auntie Sarah is um a, a university professor at the University yeah. of Ghana, uh in the theater art department. Uh she teaches a couple of subjects, which I maybe you're going to introduce that <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and 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 i think one thing that i know that she does a lot is storytelling almost i'm sure almost all the 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 the, the regions in ghana uh auntie auntie sarah has gone around you know sharing different information through storytelling and all that and we are really glad to have Auntie Sarah with us today. But please, I will allow you to give us some, some little details. I'm sure I'm going okay. to be leaving th some things out. So um, if you want to share a little bit. It's also. fine. Uh -huh. It's fine. Let's carry on with it. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to be dropping uh, her, her bio, you know, on, on our Facebook, uh, sorry, our YouTube page. So when you go later on, when you check the description box, you see um, all the credentials of Dr. Sarah Dogbaji. You mean sure YouTube got, channel? Yeah, you, YouTube channel. Oh, did I say something else? You said page. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Okay, so um, Man. what does it take to be okay, a storyteller? Okay, you got my brain going now. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, uh, babe? Fine. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm not sure whether somebody was asking a question, but um, what, what does it take to be a storyteller? I mean, you've given us, you know, intro of, you know, what storytelling is, of course, uh, migrating from tab, uh, you know, inscriptions on, on, on maybe tablets or whatever into spoken word and all that. Now, is it, can anybody tell a story or what 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 does it take to be a storyteller just um, um everybody tells stories mm -hmm. i'm sure today you have said something to your children or your mm -hmm. wife mm -hmm. you've told them something mm -hmm. about something that is going to happen or mm -hmm. something that has happened or mm -hmm. something that you're thinking about you were telling a story yeah so when we talk about storytelling, it's a lot of things. Mm. A painter is a storyteller. A, okay. a, 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 a theater director is a storyteller. Um, mm. A sculptor is a storyteller. Uh, a newscaster is a storyteller. You know, mm. So which one would you like to talk about? I suppose you want to talk about the uh, traditional Ghanaian storytelling. Yes. Is that what you want to talk about? Of course. And of course, it might also, you know, resonate with other traditions with as other, well. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will talk mainly from that perspective and then we can resonate into other. Okay. Uh, other. Right. So the, the storyteller, you see, when we want to talk about storytelling, then you want to talk about the oral tradition, the mm -hmm. oral orientation. Mm -hmm. So the oral mind stores information by speaking it mm -hmm. and storing it in stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. But before then, in the culture of the Evers, um, they trace storytelling to a sacred mm -hmm. activity in the shrine. Mm -hmm. When you go for consultation, and the cowry is cast, mm -hmm. and they, they read the pattern. 
the interpretation of the pattern is told like a story. Mm -hmm. For want of a better example, <laughs> I'm going to give the most anachronistic example. <laughs> All right. They come the dye or mm -hmm. the cowries and they tell you a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Mm -hmm. That kind of interpretation. Mm. They don't tell you that your daughter, Ashimashi, is going to do this and do that and do this. All right. They, they say it like a story. Mm -hmm. A virgin shall conceive and bear a, a, a son, and his mm -hmm. name shall be called all these kinds of things. That mm -hmm. is the kind of things they do. That is how they get a, a, a stories of, um, that is how their life stories or the, the stories of their hidden life because mm. life is in various phases. Mm -hmm. huh. Life is also in the present, the future, and the past. Yes. You know, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, they get to tell the stories, of, for want of a better way, the sacred sites of their, their lives for which they have gone for consultation. Mm -hmm. It is told in the form <laughs> of stories. And so these individuals... I'm oh, not permitted to. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about These that. <laughs> individuals are not permitted to tell stories. Mm. So that society will not mix their uh, divination mm. with entertainment. Okay. So these are the only people that I have come across in my search that do not tell stories. In other cultures, it's been said in not very certain terms that um, uh, uh, the, the chiefs and the kings do not tell stories because mm. whatever they say it should be authoritative and it should be taken as um, the message. And mm -hmm. so it shouldn't be telling stories in that. But then they do tell stories. Mm -hmm. They do tell stories in the sense that they, they, they use proverbs. Okay. They use proverbs. And some of these proverbs come in the form of stories. They use riddles. They come in the form of stories. Mm. So there are various levels of the telling of stories. It's really very wide. But then let's come to the, the most uh, superficial um, level of it that we all know that this person is a storyteller. So some people call them the griot, and then so they tell the yeah, stories, they yeah. tell the histories, they tell them all of them. So such a one is one who is interested in history. Mm -hmm. In some cultures, it is a gift. If you look, you are doing African live art things. You, you should, there's, there's a part, there's something about African li African art, which mm -hmm. is um, generational. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in, in Mafidavima, for instance, where I'm working in recent, in, in recent times, you'll find that there's a family line where mm -hmm. they are all drummers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a family line where they are all cantors. Mm. They sing. And there's a family, they, 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 they are the leaders of the singing. They raise the song to lead the singing. And you know the call and response. Yep. So they do the call and then the response follows. Because if you don't do the call well, the response will not, and it will not work. Mm -hmm. Of course. So they are, they are cantors come to mm -hmm. us like that and they, are, they belong to a certain family. Mm -hmm. There's another family of people who are composers. Mm. You know, so it is believed that there's a news that goes from person to person and, and endows them with the ability to do. But that does not mean that there is no need for skill. Mm -hmm. Skill comes with practice or skill mm -hmm. is sharpened mm -hmm. like we say so, with practice. And mm -hmm. the particular skill that you need to be able to do this is eloquence. Mm -hmm. Is eloquence to be able to express yourself. And you see, the, the stories are language specific. That's another mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. The stories carry 
the, the worldviews, the philosophies of the cultures that birth them. Mm -hmm. So remembering that the cultures have stored their histories as stories. Mm -hmm. Some of them historical, some of them fictionalized mm -hmm. life stories. But we'll come to the role of storytelling, the mm -hmm. importance of storytelling, and that's mm -hmm. what so what you need, what, what, what one needs to, to, to work on is eloquence. Mm -hmm. um, in three, they say nanwawo. Okay. And person those are some got, of the elements. Yes. The mm -hmm. person, nanwawo, the person yeah. has dry lips or dry speech organs, which means that the speech is crisp. Mm -hmm. As against nanwafo, the person's speech is not clear. Mm you will not hold attention. Mm. So the ability to use language to hold the attention of your audience, mm -hmm. the ability to use uh, uh, the elements of our Ghanaian, uh, 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 Ghanaian ways of speaking, mm. ability to use proverbs skillfully, mm. ability to draw images, Abilities to link what you're saying to the aspirations of the people listening to you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll be talking at the people instead of talking to the people. To the people. Mm. You know, so it's, it's, it's a lot of thing that one, one needs to have. Mm. And it needs, and, 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 and storytelling, is, you need to have a good use of voice yep. and speech. Mm. I've talked about the speech, but the way to use your voice to create different dynamics within the story that you're telling. Mm -hmm. It is with the voice that you create the different characters in the story and their interactions. It is with the voice that you create the mood and the mm. atmosphere in the story because there's very little you can do with props and things like that. All you do is to create the world of the story mm -hmm. through um, voice and speech and some body language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and para okay. language and things like that. All right. That. So, so um, I, I know that you spoke about, uh, I mean, you alluded to the, uh, to the roles of storytelling within the, the, the tradition and you wanted to expand on that. Can we now talk about the role of, of okay. storytelling? Okay. You see, apart from it being um, uh, um, an historical account of lives that have been lived, experiences of the past, mm -hmm. it is also a way of, of attaining poetic license. Mm. In tree, they say, Ebube ne atibetia and tokwenyo. When the speaker or the user of Proverbs and one who understands Proverbs live together, there's hardly, yes, there will not be conflict because people don't, uh, you speak to your neighbor in proverbial language. Mm -hmm. So it is out of respect. It is out of dignity. Mm -hmm. of speaking, the, the, the politics of the speaking. You don't just go straight to your name and say, hey, the other day, the thing you did was wrong. Why did you go and take your neighbor's wife? Mm. What do you, you will start a quarrel, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. they will say, there lived a man mm -hmm. who did X, Y, Z. Okay. I'll give you an example. All right. At one point, in a place called Akokupom or Adokrom, there was an 86-year-old woman who was going to tell a story. Mm. She said, Enya Enya Abuwa Sebo Ne Woho Abuwa Sebo Nsode Ye Nina Ye Nimse or ye nipa bia or ye jata. All right, personification, huh? Okay. So Abwa Sebo is the leopard. Mm -hmm. He said, there lived the leopard. 
Mm -hmm. And as for the leopard, we all know that he is somebody who is a lion. All right. The leopard is a leopard. The lion is a lion. So mm. what is this woman talking about? He says the leopard is a certain human being. Yeah. Who is a lion. So he, she's talking about a human being. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think I think I think it, it reminds me of Chinua Chibiks. I'm not sure whether he's the one, but Chinua Chibiks is a, a proverb that says that um, words, proverbs are the um, he, he was saying that proverbs are the oil through which words are eaten or something like that. Yes. Uh, in 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 uh, things fall apart. Yeah. So yeah. It, it like clothing the words the 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 idea with some other. Um, Terms that might not necessarily go directly, but you really exactly. have to think about it to to, to yes. get the full idea. The decency mm -hmm. in the speaking, so you yes. would know that today's world where people go on air and shout all kinds of things is mm -hmm. not the decent way that mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. that we were trained to speak like. Is that that manner of speaking is mm -hmm. different? Mm -hmm. You see, so they use the stories to mm -hmm. reprimand. Mm -hmm. If you have an issue with a king, who am I going to report it to? Oh, you have an issue with a king. <laughs> <laughs> you might you might as well exercise yourself from the from the top. Yeah. But then you would tell the king. Mm -hmm. You tell the king and you tell it in a story. Proverbial way. Exactly. And that is why we say, mm -hmm. if you want to say something to the almighty God, say it to the wind. Mm. And they understand the proverbs that you have spoken. Mm -hmm. And they will respect that. They will yep. not jump onto the uh, onto defend the what do you call it jump onto defense and and, and start you know reacting unreasonably. No, mm -hmm. I would tell you, in one community where I did a storytelling as part of their annual festival, mm -hmm. and one and one of the evenings of storytelling, in fact, it was the evening after the deva, the queen mother was seated. Mm -hmm. There's a man who got up and did the, the interlude song and dance that we call in Bobo in Tree. Mm -hmm. He did the dance and did something that one would consider unthinkable. Mm -hmm. But he got away with it. He danced and danced and danced and stooped in front of the queen and, you know, like, I don't know how to explain it. He held his bum as if he was opening his butt Ooh. to the, yeah. It's very obscene mm -hmm. if it were not in a storytelling situation. Mm. He would not have gone, uh, gotten away with that. He mm. would have had to tell drying or something yeah. to the mm -hmm. But because we were doing, it. yes, because we were doing storytelling, it was overlooked, mm. poetic license. But mm. then the people would know yeah. That something has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Or they would know why he has behaved like that. Mm. I didn't interrogate it. Mm. Uh -huh. Because I also know that I didn't want it to be altered other than the way it's been communicated. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes an issue. Mm. Uh -huh. So I left it like that. So um, um, I can only allude to uh, make inferences to that happening, but I cannot give you specific meanings why he did that rude gesture mm -hmm. in the public space, uh, in the public space like that mm -hmm. to the queen. It was not right, but in mm -hmm. that instant, it was absolutely acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So they told the stories to. Uh, um, express themselves in, in these ways. They also told the stories to fictionalize mm -hmm. 
things. Mm. You see, there's the saying also which says that the hunter sees a lot of things, but he doesn't say it all. Yep. But he will tell it as a story. Mm -hmm. So that is why we have a lot of, um, what do you call it, fantasy. We have a lot of fantasy stories there like Mm. that. Apart from it being a factual experience that has been fictionalized, Mm -hmm. it is also an opportunity for people to massage their creativity. Mm -hmm. It is a recognition that there are various worlds around us. Mm -hmm. If I ask anybody here now to tell a story, I would not be surprised that somebody will start and say, there lived a monster. That may know who monster. (laughs) (laughs) you understand but that monster can represent a lot of things so the creations of the oral mind are you still there or you're disappearing from the screen (laughs) my my microphone just just fell sorry about that yeah it's fine i think we're good Mm -hmm. yeah so There are so many things that the storytelling serves. I mean, so even if you want to study the structure and the the constitution of a community, you can do so by just listening to their stories. Mm. Listen to the stories they tell. Mm -hmm. It tells you a lot about the people. Mm. It tells you their occupation. Mm-hmm. It tells you about um, the family structure. Mm-hmm. It tells you all the systems that run in the community. Mm. You see, through storytelling, we teach also the youth mm-hmm. many things. The first that jumps at us is language. Mm. Because we learn language first by listening. Yeah. And when you tell stories and you tell the stories in the Ghanaian languages, we we revive the language. And we even get the opportunity to speak words that would otherwise disappear Mm -hmm. because of the changing times. You see, if I tell an ever story and I say sonugagle, I don't think any ever in today's world will know what Sonugagle is. Mm. It is a broken pot. Oh. <laughs> a, a I, I have no <laughs> Yeah, it's a useless broken pot that okay. you, you probably will pick from uh, um, the, the rubbish dump or something, but mm-hmm. there's a use for it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you use it to fetch fire mm-hmm. and things like that. But these days, who does that? Mm. So everybody's using gas. I know who needs sonuga gland and all these things. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> then, we can use it for art. <laughs> we can use it for art. But mm-hmm. then because it is in a story, that mm-hmm. vocabulary never gets lost. Mm-hmm. No matter how far we go, once mm-hmm. that story is alive, that vocabulary it, it, it stays alive unless the teller decides to eliminate it because of specific um if i'm telling a story to a group of um nigerians there's no point in saying so because mm-hmm. they will not know what it is so yeah. I'll, I'm, I will as well go straight and say mm-hmm. we teach values mm-hmm. in stories mm. the societal values fellowship love community it, co- communal living, a, a fellow feeling, empathy, mm-hmm. all these things. We learn it from experiences that have been expressed through storytelling. Mm. You would know that, hey, hmm, because Kwan Nancy did that, 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 this, this, this happened. Mm-hmm. Because, let me use the story that everybody knows. Because Kwe Nancy was greedy, mm-hmm. he was not thinking. He was mm-hmm. blinded by his greed. Mm-hmm. And so he couldn't think of putting the pot behind him so he can climb. Yep. So it's, it's a very simple story. But mm-hmm. there's great wisdom yep. 
in that story. Mm-hmm. You see, uh-huh. yeah. so then when you listen to that story, you learn this wisdom. The morals. The morals, the ethics of the society. Mm. The, what's this? You see, things as intricate as what the society considers beautiful mm-hmm. captured in the stories. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They are all mm. in the stories. Mm-hmm. What do they think is attractive? What makes a beautiful woman yeah. or a handsome man? Mm-hmm. What is an attractive man? Like, mm. All these things are in the stories. In that the stories. Mm. You see. Yeah. But then I should also be quick to say that these things change with time. So you need to be in touch with the origins of the stories mm-hmm. to be able to know how far they have drifted. Mm. Yeah, I, I was actually about to get to the evolution of some of these stories, um, how it changes even within a particular tradition and also yes. how it changes within different traditional forms. Because I know that with one tradition, let's say uh, the Akan tradition, it might be the spider. And I say mm-hmm. in another tradition, it might be the monkey. Um, does it change relevance? It, uh, does it go back to emphasize on the fact that you said, you know, these stories are a reflection of the society themselves, uh, you know, or what, what, what is your thought on that? Yeah, um, when you go to um, northern Ghana and places like that, the, the hero villain character mm-hmm. is the hare mm. or the rabbit. Okay. Where you go to Akan is um, Kukwanansi, mm-hmm. the, the spider. Of course, when you go to Ga, it is Anan, which is still the spider. When you go to Ebe, it is, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Yiyi, which is, or Aye, and it is still the spider. When you go to Nigeria, it is a Jakba, the tortoise. Mm-hmm. You see, but when you investigate these things, you will find that there are characteristics of these animals Mm -hmm. that make them useful in these character positions in the story. Your head will fall. Keep it still. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so uh, pretty much they use... um, the characters, I mean, some very um, significant characters or traits of these animals, and then they infuse the stories to reflect these characters. Exactly. And then the personal, uh, how is it personalized or personification? Personification. Yeah. yeah. Like. And, and use these characters as a mirror to look at society. Yes. That, okay. Yes. Okay. Because when you talk about um, us here in Accra, for instance, mm-hmm. we do not have a lot of rabbits running around. <laughs> <laughs> so it will not be easy to make stories about, you know, rabbits or the hair and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's not possible. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And so it, it just doesn't work. We might have a hair running through one story. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. But, Huh. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know whether you. Yeah. You can. You yes. can finish up on that. Yes. Okay. You. You bring your oh, question. So. Um. I will. N- let, let's look at the evolution process. Um. Of course. I grew up with the, by the fireside Saturday four p.m. stories that you know. Of course. I. I. I my parents told me stories. Like in school, we used to do story time and all that. And and also and so when the by a fireside thing came, it was more like you know you had a process, you had an idea. Um, has that changed? And of course, I would say yes, it has changed. It has. What uh, what what influences these changes, and is it good or bad? Um, a lot of changes have occurred. 
uh, it is both good and bad. <laughs> Let me answer that. <laughs> a lot of a lot of a lot of changes have occurred. You know, in my culture, I experience storytelling, and one of the things that I haven't spoken about is stories are told on the night after the burial. Oh. Yes. You know, when there's a funeral uh, 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 ceremony. Ceremony. Oh, mm -hmm. So is it a ceremony? I don't want to call it a ceremony. Uh, uh, funeral uh, rite. It, it, right. <laughs> so we go through the rites. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain euphoria. Mm. Everybody is together and there's anxiety to get the thing done well. And then finally, when the, there's from the wake all through people don't sleep and all this but as soon as the body is buried everybody falls asleep mm. everybody falls asleep soon mm. after the burial, the burial. Mm -hmm. and it is natural from the exhaustion and all that but the evening because people sleep early they wake up in the evening and then mm. there's nothing to do mm. But then if that space is not occupied, people will begin to sink back into reflecting on the pains and all that, but they want to put a ceiling on all that. So mm. they occupy that time with storytelling. Okay. So we tell stories to revive the knowledge of self, mm. to assert self-knowledge to entrench community identity mm -hmm. to encourage life to continue remind mm. you of who we are and strengthen you to find the courage to move on mm. these stories are told late into the night and so mm. by the time the story is ending Everybody is relaxed and mm. is ready to talk about other things, no longer about the dead, at least not in that moment, mm -hmm. so that people can find healing. Mm. Oh, I wanted to talk about something else, and I talked about this. Yeah. I was talking about the transformations. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. So we told stories about different, I mean, uh, uh, and say, God, sing, come on. You know about that? Yeah, it uh, is that, stories yes. told under, uh, may, yes. maybe not a beer bar, but. Uh, uh, palm wine. Palm, yeah, palm wine uh, shop. <laughs> yes. And so we say, they, they say also, talk, 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 we are drinking, but we are getting wisdom. Mm -hmm. How is that? Ah, they're getting the wisdom. Mm. It is through the stories that they are telling. Mm -hmm. They are discussing ideas, and each of these ideas are likely to uh, 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 inspire stories. Mm -hmm. And the story. So the stories were it's just the way I'm saying it is the heartbeat, mm -hmm. it is the breathing, mm -hmm. the life. Mm -hmm. So the stories are told in all kinds of platforms to satisfy a great variety of needs. Mm. Now, they are not always told for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was even going to come to that point. Um, so when, I, when you say entertainment, it looks like, I, I mean, anytime I hear entertainment, it, it takes off the value. Yes, the value within the storytelling itself, but of course, maybe other stuff will come before even you know entertainment. Entertainment might be the last. I mean, to me, to me though. So it's it, we don't just tell the story to. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it yeah. is not always like that. Mm -hmm. It is not always like that. Mm -hmm. Some of the stories are philosophical. Mm -hmm. You see. Am I permitted to tell one? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, yeah, that's that's one of the things <laughs> we're going to be doing uh, anyway. You know, so, <laughs> you know, the story is told about three men mm -hmm. 
these days I have gotten into the habit of telling people where I got the stories from. Okay. Because that in itself is a story. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to tell the story, but this is a story that um, I performed with Osei Crunchy. I know he's on the African arts. Yeah. The yeah. Ciprewa player. Yeah. Yes. Great guy, philosopher. Mm -hmm. So this story is about three men who said they were tired of their family members dying. Mm. If they had lived these days, I'm not sure they would have found the energy to do this with this COVID numbers going <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, and so they armed themselves and said they were going into the forest to look for death so they can oh. kill. Mm -hmm. They don't want any more deaths in their community, so they mm -hmm. are going to look for death and mm -hmm. kill him. And so they set off. They went and went and looked and looked. They searched and searched and searched and they came across an old man mm. and he said hey young man why why are you so armed to the teeth where are you going and they told him we have come here looking for death so that we can kill him so if you are death tell us so we can come finish, finish you, you. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> And the old man said, no, not at all. I am not death. <laughs> How could I be death? But as I was coming down this path, mm -hmm. we all know that death can be very elusive. Mm -hmm. I saw a sack by the, the, the side of the path, mm -hmm. but I didn't open it. Maybe you want to check if death is hiding in that sack. Mm. And he went his way. The young men followed the direction and they found the sack. They opened the sack and what did they find? Plenty of gold. Wow. They found plenty of gold. Mm -hmm. Bars and bars and bars of gold. Okay. But when I say bars and bars and bars of gold, you said, you know that I have moved into the contemporary time because in those uh -huh. times, they were not selling the gold in bars. <laughs> in bars. <laughs> <laughs> That's one evolution. <laughs> so they found the gold and they were excited. They said, mm. hey, we came to look for death and we have found wealth. Found gold. Mm -hmm. Hey! People... We have been starving on this journey. Now this is money. Yeah. Let's fetch some and go mm -hmm. and buy some food from the next village. Mm -hmm. So there were three friends. We fetched a bit of the gold and gave it to one person to go into the next village, change it and buy food mm -hmm. and water so they can live. Mm -hmm. He did, he went. When he left, the two who were left behind to be watching the gold mm -hmm. took a decision. That Charlie, this guy, he's gone. Old. But instead of splitting this gold into three, why not split it in two? <laughs> you know? Death he's not here. <laughs> let's devise a plan. When he comes, right. let's finish him and just split this thing in two and then carry on with life after all what? Mm. Whilst they were doing this thing, planning mm -hmm. this evil thing, the one who went also started thinking, hey, let me pa. Why do I have to share this gold with these people when I can have it all to myself? Can you imagine what things I would do? The Dubai mm -hmm. I would go to. <laughs> <laughs> and all these things. Uh -huh. So he decided to poison the food that he mm -hmm. bought. So he bought the food, poisoned it, and brought it back. His mm -hmm. friends were also waiting for him with their clubs and stones. Yeah. So they stoned him to and death. clapped him down close to death. Mm -hmm. And while he was waiting to die, they sat beside him and ate the food. <laughs> yeah. They didn't think that he could also think evil. Mm. So they ate the food and poisoned themselves. Mm. 
And as they struggled with the pains and the pangs of the poison eating their innards, mm -hmm. this one was dying. They were also dying. The old man came back and said, oh, young man, ah, I thought you said you were going to look for death. Now you're lying here dying. What happened? Couldn't you overpower him? Mm. Yeah. You see, and so he sang a song. Enibri wo wafa minyanum. Enibri wo wafa. Enibri wo wafa. Enibri wo wafa. We are seeing. Okay. You see how you're thinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning there is there is greed in the world. Oh, yes, no, that's the, that's that's the right. greed. greed. Greed is on the side, on the of, side death. of death. Okay. Oh, greed is death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the yes. death that you're looking for, they were looking for, was mm. inside them. Mm. The mm. greed that they were harboring mm. was deadlier than mm. the death that they were looking for. Mm. Yeah. You cannot. Yeah, this is a philosophical mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. And this is not the kind of story you listen to. There is <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Makes you sit and mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Think about their life and its living. Mm. The stories abound like that about human nature. Mm -hmm. It is not for nothing that people told stories and sang and said, Shronipa Neja is Samai. Fear human beings and leave ghosts. Mm -hmm. It is not for nothing. It is mm. what people have seen. Mm. So we tell the stories and there's so much weight in these mm. stories. Where else did you want me to go to in this story? I've forgotten it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> that's that's. I'm talking about of course, there, Yeah, a, a lot of you know thinking into the story, and I think it's it's just wonderful. Um, so the yeah. changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the changes, I, the evolution. Yes, I will tell you about opening Kwesi. Or something, I've forgotten his name. Mm. He was 96 mm. at the time we tell, I, I was working in his community. Mm. This man, when I talk about him, it breaks my heart. You know why? He wow. told me one day mm. that you see, this thing you're doing with your cameras with the whole community is not helping me. There's so mm. much I want to tell you. Mm. You must bring your cameras for me alone. I mm. will tell you what happened when at 14, on my way to the farm, I got captured by dwarfs. And I lived with dwarfs for nine months before they brought really? me back. Whatever I saw in the dwarf world, I have never told anybody, bring your cameras, I will tell you. Really? I missed it. Oh my God. I missed it because I, I couldn't afford it. Mm. And by the time I put myself together and I went back, he was dead. Oh, yeah. So these are some of the experiences that people tell in their mm -hmm. stories. And so, yeah, that's part of it. But Openi Kwesi, when he was telling his story, and he wanted to talk about a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. He never, he would say, hey, why semi slipped? And now what can I, a chow chow, or friend, and a henema, what can do? And now you rob me, what you do? He would talk about the beautiful woman according to what the standards of 
the concept of beauty. Mm. And you can imagine the generational gap. Mm -hmm. And when he talks about a handsome man, he will talk about where to turn him down. Oh. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. But then when the younger people were talking about a beautiful woman, they will say, why are you not pay me? Mm. You see? Mm -hmm. Transpose, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. migration has come. Yeah, migration, uh -huh. of course. Why are you not pay me? Where mm. should polish? Where you <laughs> nano? Where you can nano? Yeah. Yeah. No, I shall guarantee. Mm -hmm. That's the crow, shia, crow, shia. That's migration has happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so within this migration, still the 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 relevance of the story are still alive. The and... relevance of the story are still alive. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that there's a young girl of about twelve. She mm -hmm. told a story. This is when mm -hmm. was Kwesi doing. Mm. He told a story. You know that we, at the end of the story, so Kukwana still ran and hid in the corner of, of, of the roof. Of the roof, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And this time, the girl said, so when Kukwana still uh, uh, hid, ran and hid in the, in the corner of the roof, then uh, Nana Nyankupon said, you, you are going to remain there until the second coming of my son. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> you see uh -huh. <laughs> so you see how the thing works it's, its way into yeah the, so the it's, fabric. it's fusing into the contemporary times exactly because everybody tells the stories according to their realities mm -hmm. i would tell this same story about the three men to another group of people and i'll tell it differently mm -hmm. But so the, then it goes the, the, it goes back oh sorry it goes back to explain the fact that the storyteller has to has to be able to nano like as you uh, explain, has yeah. to be able i mean has to be an orator right yes um, mm -hmm. yeah so the essence of the story usually is not compromised mm. but the elements that lead to that fact mm. The journey is what usually is uh, reflective of what the teller's circumstances mm. are. Mm. All right. It is a yeah. common thing when I'm telling stories, especially when I'm telling it in English, when I'm retelling mm -hmm. the stories in English. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there, there's a wide difference, difference in the telling in the Ghanaian languages. I tell stories in Chi, Ga, mm -hmm. and Ever. Mm -hmm. I, I can't languages Ga and Ever. Uh, when I'm telling these stories, even when I'm telling it from Chi to Ga, there's a difference. There's a difference. Because the cultural contest dynamics are different mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. the cultural mm -hmm. context mm -hmm. are, are different and so when i'm bringing it into english that mm -hmm. also brings a world that is a very different thing mm -hmm. because some of the thoughts that are expressed in the Ghanaian languages are very difficult to translate into english without missing out the essence mm -hmm. the importance of that thought mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So, but then I still tell it anyway, in a mm. way that will make sense, you, you know, so it's a, a kind of transposition of the thought into the contemporary time so mm. that today's Ghanaian can relate to um, the content of mm. the story, to the narrative. Yeah. Is it making sense? Yeah, of course. It's, it's making a lot of sense. And okay. um, yeah, we are already one hour away. And it's, it's, been, hey, really? it's been... Yeah. <laughs> it's been really uh, educative and um, uh, very informative listening to all these uh, thoughts from uh, Dr. Sarah 
Dogbaji. Um, for those who join at least this African Live Arts, uh, we are connecting African art forms to uh, people across the world. And um, I know uh, Dr. Sarah is doing, of course, she's a, uh, a professor at the University of Ghana, at the theater art department, and she is the CEO of Lododo Arts. Um, so if you can connect with her uh, through her uh, Instagram pages, L O D O D O D O D O Lododo means Lodo -do. comments. Oh, okay. All right, so <laughs> that's where you have it, right? And 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 I'm sure uh, you're going to also give us uh, more information into where we, people can find you. You can also find her on the African Live Arts website, www.africanliveart.com. Yes. Uh, and if you're interested in, you know, requesting for a class, yeah, that would be great. Uh, she can give you more information, more stories, uh, and, and on and on. Um, so we're going to open up for questions uh, very soon, pretty much. Um, uh, so if you have any question, uh, just get ready. Uh, you can either type it out or I can also give you the chance to uh, ask the right questions. Um, maybe my last question, because of course the time is fast spent. Um, my last question is, are you, um, are you concerned about the current trends of storytelling? Is it still ingrained within the various tradition? Because as you said, it, it has a lot of information that philosophical, uh, philosophical and, and opinions that is good for societal building and all that. Is it, are we losing the value? Is it being, um, you know, told? Does it, does it still resonate in the life or the culture of people or, uh, or where is it now? Um. Uh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> before, <laughs> before you get to the point of whether it is, it is relevant now or then, the point is the storytelling is an endangered art form. Mm. Mm. It is an endangered art form in the sense that, um, um, let me use examples, okay. Mm -hmm. We think that storytelling should be going on in the countryside mm. because in the main cities, it is difficult to tell stories, like I said, because the stories are language specific mm -hmm. and the uh, audience participation all add up to make it what it is, the, the, mm -hmm. the form, what it is. Mm. Then when you raise the song, you tell the story in, in, in Accra, your neighbor doesn't speak ever. Mm. The next person doesn't speak Ga. The other person doesn't speak Fante. Mm -hmm. So when you tell the story, it is difficult to raise the songs for people to participate. Oh, okay. So it makes it difficult to, to tell the stories. Mm -hmm. It makes it... It, it becomes difficult. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's uh -huh. Because if I raise the song, when I'm telling a story and I say, pack the pack, the, everybody can de say, say me what, say me what. All right. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But then when I say, Ananupa belly, how would you respond? You don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't know it. Mm -hmm. So when I raise it, you cannot respond. Mm -hmm. When I say that the howle, I am wovolo. Nana howle, I am wovolo. Natino gami ha. Can't respond. No. So it may. <laughs> Language makes, specific. <laughs> yes. It makes it difficult. Yes. Now. So because of that, storytelling in the metropolis is, is very, very uh, challenged. Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm working on now, trying to mm -hmm. bring it back into that space. And do you think that, you know, social media, the new forms has also had great influence on the, um, the fact that storytelling is being endangered? I will touch on that. If I okay. forget, remind me, put a, no a tag thing on it. Gotcha. Now, when you go to the countryside, mm -hmm. 
where we believe everybody is a everybody is a can everybody mm. you know so people mm. can tell stories they still don't tell the stories anymore mm. i found out that simple things like the introduction of electricity into the community mm. that's storytelling mm. because that introduction brings along with a, in its fold video games Mm -hmm. records nights mm -hmm. and film shows mm -hmm. and the exotic becomes attractive mm. so people are no longer interested in gathering to listen to the story because we all know that everybody knows the stories mm. it is the teller's art that we relish so these things have threatened storytelling in the country. And the most prominent of them all is quest for higher education. Mm. I have often encountered parents coming to take their children away from the storytelling sessions, saying, oh no, if she had such a storytelling session, we should have risen to where she has gotten to, but they do not know. Mm. But I sat in storytelling and I know what it has done for me. That is why I'm trying to pass it on to their children. Yeah. That is one thing. Mm -hmm. So this is why the art form is endangered. And we need to work assiduously to get communities to realize mm. what it is that we are losing. In one instance, an old lady said to a researcher going to look for stories, he said, oh, we are looking for stories. Uh, we are cooking in silver, and you are asking for everything we put. <laughs> what is that? Really? <laughs> yes. But what she doesn't realize mm. is that the earthen ware port is healthy. Mm -hmm. The aluminium is killing us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right that's right it doesn't realize that mm -hmm. so yeah so it is in this fold that we can look at um what do you call it social media mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they have come as part of the introduction of civilization mm -hmm. okay so mm. once we have that I, there's nothing wrong with social media. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. But then it creates a certain platform. Mm -hmm. And the definition or the presentation of the African person mm. leaves a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. Because we... How do I say this without sounding negative? I don't <laughs> intend to sound negative. So it's a good thing to have yeah. the social media. Mm -hmm. But we have to be self-assertive. Mm. We don't have to be like. That mm. is the problem. Yeah. We don't have to be like anybody. Mm -hmm. We should be good as we are. And we mm -hmm. are. Mm. We are. Mm. We just have to live. The tiger does not have to prove its tigritude, as Shoyinka said. Mm. We don't have to prove to anybody that we are Africans. And we don't have to prove to anybody that we can be as Western as the Westerner. Mm. No. It is mm. not necessary. Mm. We just have to be. Mm. And we just have to be who we are. Mm. And by saying this, I am not suggesting that um, we should always live in a nostalgia of the past, you know, romanticizing the past. That is not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Culture in its own self evolves. Mm -hmm. Culture grows. And it yeah. evolves according to its own need for change hmm. and its own uh, uh, need for redirection. And hmm. it does so at its own pace. Hmm. 
Do you see? Mm -hmm. Not according to the dictates of another culture. No. Mm. So there's something that we do very often. We do it. Oh, when you go to Europe and America, but that is Europe and America. Mm -hmm. And even not 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 all the things are actually factual. Um, sometimes we bless I God for stories. their lives. <laughs> <laughs> we bless God for their lives and all the intentions. Yeah. I get I get showing. I get those. I, I hear those conversations a lot. And sometimes some people say, "Oh, this one in America, you wouldn't find this." And I, I, I tell them that you are not here. I mean, you don't know what is going on. But in a way, um, would you also say that um, with our system of Tory Italian, perhaps we were not, uh, or maybe, uh, uh, maybe, how do I say, uh, traditional authorities or people who were engaged in these traditional forms um, did not as it were, connects to contemporary times in a way. And so it made other things, you know, overcome this, the relevance of storytelling. Um, as it, for example, uh, right now we are, everything is dig digitalized, right? So is it that we've, we were not able to uh, be consistent with the changing times? And, and so for that matter, um, people had taste for other things. Of course, the introduction of electricity will let people get TV and watch uh, news. But then if that system of traditional storytelling was actually came, you know, or transformed into something else that could, that could um, meet that changing times, That's it would have it. still be as relevant as it was before. That is it. That is what we need to do. Mm. We need to repackage the stories onto all these platforms. Mm. That is why, um, so we, we uh, uh, what is the word? Uh, resilience. Mm -hmm. We need to work. This is, for instance, these stories that I have told you now, we can make mm -hmm. animations out of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you make good animations of these stories and you put them uh, um, on these platforms, they will still be watched. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, so there's yes. work to be done. Yes. My my problem or my challenge, one of my challenge has actually been with, you know, audiobooks and all that. And the fact that some of these stories are not told by the traditions that these stories evolved from because I've, I've listened to a couple of um, books, you know, on audiobooks because I do drive and I do drive a lot. So sometimes, you know, to listen to a literature, I just find a book or uh, on Kindle or on audiobooks and all that. Even, even, even things fall apart and some other books, you realize that because these were, these books are not read by people who are custodians, the, ex, of, the custodians of these traditions, certain words, you, you, you miss the relevance of certain words. You know, you miss, because it is only when an Akan is speaking an Akan story that the words can actually come out like an Akan. And of course you might get the interpretation thereof or somebody within the culture. That is what I think, of course. I, I um, But, if somebody who is not within the culture is reading this, these books and posting them, of course, uh, on audiobooks and other all these other platforms, they will miss a lot of things. When you read, when you when you listen to um, um, Homecoming, I'm not sure whether Homecoming is is on. Is, yeah, I think Homecoming is is on audiobooks. Um, the Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela is on is on audiobooks. Now, when you when you read that. It's, it's like, can't we do it? I mean. <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. That's why you must not call me dog badge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, so it goes back to that same thing, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm being caught in my own net. But anyway, we're going to open up for questions for anybody who would want to um, join us uh, to have the discussion and anybody who has any questions uh, to bring it up. So uh, the, uh, the floor is open. You can, you can unmute yourself and ask any questions. Um, 
anybody there, 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 there are things in the charts maybe you want to look at them oh maybe okay, yes let me, yes let me there are things in the to... charts okay uh one moment let me check this out oh Actually, I had a question. Who is okay. the who is the um um if you have to can you can you can you introduce yourself a little bit and then you can ask no <laughs> I'm Valerie Yesinu. Uh, everybody calls me Miss G, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm from um, okay, well, my dad is from actually Togo, okay, and okay. Uh, my mom is from the Caribbean, and uh, I live uh, in America. Oh, yeah. nice to meet you, Valerie. Nice meeting you, and I teach dance. <laughs> dance oh, <and> wow. <laughs> so I, had, I just had a question. Who is the average storyteller in, in, uh, in Ghana? Because I was thinking, I was thinking about, for example, in America, there's like a, a real... Uh, 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 rise of poetry slam, you know, which is a way where there's a lot of uh, uh, young people who get into poetry and into storytelling also, and they love that. And this is something like that's rising in America. So I was wondering, what is the average, you know, age for a storyteller? Is there is is it something that's um, is it big within the young people in in um, in Ghana? Yeah, you see, then it depends on which storytelling, because a lot of young people are doing poetry, like you said. Okay. A lot of people are doing a lot of poetry, um, um, spoken word artists, and they are speaking mysteries. Hmm. Yes, that one too is there. And it's, it's a big thing with the young people, really. Yes, it's a big thing. But the uh, uh, Ghanaian... Uh, traditional storytelling as uh, we're talking about right now is not such a big thing with young people because they have not experienced it. I, I entered a community, I just told you I'm doing something in Mafi Devima. They are oldest, the, the, the uh, living storytellers now, they are in their 70s, 80s onwards. They mm. haven't done community storytelling in about 50 mm. years. Mm. So if we don't do it now, mm -hmm. pass it on, then it dies. So mm -hmm. this kind of storytelling is what is endangered. But the, 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 the contemporary storytelling is really um, very, very um, um, ripe and it's catching on very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are mm. doing a lot of rap, uh, spoken word artists. They're yeah. doing a lot of music, uh, what do you call it? Raga, rap music. Yeah. And uh, yeah, all these genres are coming out and they're great. You know, sometimes they link it to what they have heard from the past, which is a great thing. It is upon the old that we build the new, I said in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all that is good. Mm. Mm. How do we store those, oh, those storytellers, um, those, those, those uh, historical uh, stories? How do we how do we store them? You know, because I know that you know the older people are going to you know leave this earth, and, you know, with that with those secrets. I would say, you know. Exactly. So how do we? So what do we do to store them? And exactly. So what what I am doing, and what I'm th I think other people are are, are doing, is to mop up so i'm calling i'm collecting these stories and i get them told in the community way as it used to be mm. and then we document them in audiovisual formats so that we can have it for posterity mm -hmm. you know whilst doing that the opportunity exists for the young people to experience it mm. and so once they have experienced it, a seed is sown. So there is hope for the future. Whilst we are documenting what we have now, what we can get now, and storing them for a posterity, there is also the opportunity for the young people to take the baton, mm -hmm. keep going. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
Kokremo here says uh, new trends in post-colonial uh, Ghanaian communities eroded the basis and spaces for the performance of storytelling. Do you agree? I said that. Okay. Mm, yeah, I agree. Mm. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, he also said that, you know, previously storytelling, of, of course, in the 70s, storytelling was practiced in primary schools. And of course, now it is, it is not. So yeah. um, I, I, I taught as a classroom teacher, I mm -hmm. did storytelling. I taught storytelling as part of the Ga language. Mm. When you teach Ghanaian language, the storytelling, because that is a very good way of teaching the language to the young people. They mm. develop creative listening and, mm. you know, colorful use of the language and the dynamics that exist therein. Mm. And that is why, even till today, when I do the storytelling festivals, mm. I do them in the language-specific genres. Mm. So we have Akan nights, the stories are told in Akan, so that the young people can hear. Because mm. in today's Ghana, People are not speaking their Ghanaian languages the, to the their languages. children. Yep. They are mm -hmm. speaking English to the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this parent, you know, how much English has he or she got that the addition some to train a child? I'm <laughs> no vernacular get, is spoken here. <laughs> no vernacular is spoken. I'm trying to get them to understand that when the child speaks your language, their intellect develops much, much, much faster and deeper their reasoning mm -hmm. is more you know developed than trying to give them a, because they don't have their soul does not respond to the language they don't mm -hmm. have an intuitive response to the language mm. and it makes it difficult but anyway yeah. the thing is like i said the past is now are found also bypassing us into the future mm -hmm. and so as we are doing this now, when we were children, we admired people speaking in English because the standard thing was for us to speak our Ghanaian languages. Mm. So when we see children, we say, hey, dadaba. <laughs> they are speaking in English and we admire yeah. them speaking in English. But mm -hmm. today, nearly all the children speak in English. So mm. people are beginning to admire children who are speaking their mother tongue. Mm. So there is going to be a reversal. Mm -hmm. There is hope for the future. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, um, I, I, something, something just came to mind quickly. And of course, um, still people on the platform, if you have any questions, you can, you can keep them coming. Um, so, you know, uh, the Pabobos and the... Um, you know, the old high life musicians. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. They wove storytelling with their music. Yes. And so you listen to some of their, their songs and it's actually a storytelling section, right? Yes. Now, yes. would you say that our stories has evolved from that system to what we hear, the music that we hear today? It um, is actually, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah, you see, the power bowls that you're talking about, they be, they belong to the, those years or not mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. See, aha. Uh -huh. So look, look at the Jack Wonimo. Mm -hmm. is is almost in his 90s right now. But he mm -hmm. sang the song which says, Abunai Miss Rojan Fitei, Eno Abunai Miss Rojan Fitei, Mena Abunai Miss Rojan Fitei, Nana Abunai. Do you know that story? No. Oh, you don't. <laughs> Abna, Abna had a wife, a husband, mm -hmm. and Abna went to a, a, a funeral a rite, you know, and then he found a lover. Mm -hmm. So he agreed with his lover mm -hmm. that hmm, my husband is will be home, but the the, the lover was a hunter. Mm -hmm. So she agreed. And they set a time that her husband will come back from farm and will be seated at a particular place. Mm. When he she fans the fire and creates a big smoke, mm. the lover should fire his gun through the smoke and kill her husband. Okay. <laughs> and he did. So really? after the burial of Abuna's husband, mm. Abuna now married her lover. Mm -hmm. One day they were sitting out 
normal, simple life continues. Mm -hmm. Abuna starts fanning her fire. <laughs> then he said that, hey, Abuna, I am afraid of your fire fire. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, so they, they made all these, all these songs, mm -hmm. yellow CC day for corner, putting mm -hmm. hands for jobs, waiting the cost of money, money palava. Yeah. yeah. All these people were, and even, well, even money palava is even very yellow CC, it's very, very contemporary. But mm -hmm. there are other ones, uh, Ike Nyame and mm -hmm. all these people, mm -hmm. you know. Even a Jaco and uh, what's her, her name? Uh, Nanam Padu. Nanam Padu, yeah. I was trying to remember his name. <laughs> Nanam Padu. Yeah. You know, so much you are doing, so much you are crying here. S O S O M U M U G Y E J. You know. And the Eku, I think he also sang. He also did one. Yes. Eku Sika. Eku Sika. Yes. Yes. He 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 did that. And you know one interesting thing. Mm. Jaconi Mo has a unique gift of creating the stories himself. Yeah. You okay. will hear it and think it is one of the folk tales of the past, but he mm. created them. He mm. creates them himself. Most mm -hmm. of them he creates himself. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So so I was saying that yeah, in 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 their period, that is how they wove, because of course, those stories were in the communities and so of course either they create them themselves as um the one we just spoke did or they pick stories from the tradition and then they weave it in their song now we are in contemporary times uh of course sampana and aputu i'm not sure the, the interpretation of those <laughs> those words but would you say that the songs that are being sung by contemporary youth are a reflection of their stories now a truck for baby, also kept passing. Na ori kono, we now call the Sunday. Uh huh. Ewo hankitifa. Okay. Ose rabeje, rabeje, rabeje. The more one wo hompun, odos do do. Crop. I mean, crop. I mean. Okay. Amen, American. Bye -bye. Would you say this song is contemporary or <laughs> it is? <laughs> um, I think I heard this song long this ago. This is Jedubele um, Ambule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is Jedubele Ambule. So mm. this, and this is folk. Mm. You know, fireman no nye moko, fireman no nye moba, fireman rabo ya tata show, oze she mo frama. <laughs> you know, these are mm -hmm. game songs, mm. play songs, but we are drawing on them mm. and making them um, contemporary um, uh, 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 music. I mean, recent times I've had remix of Medofa Da Da Mia, Oda Da Da Mio. Yeah, mm -hmm. all these things are. Are we not getting remix of around some Kuti songs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bella? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The, 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 we are going back into the future. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, real quick before we, we wrap up, um, mm -hmm. African parents should tell stories to their children before they go to bed. Uh, European parents read for their children to, you know, at bedtime. We read. We read to them, but we also have to tell them stories. Uh, that is from uh, Ko Kramo. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing your name well, but if I'm not, yes, uh, really, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Ko, you are absolutely right. I'll tell you how I got into storytelling. Mm -hmm. My son, at three years, he's sitting here listening to me. He's had it down, now his ears are free. <laughs> when he was three years, he asked me, Mama, tell me a story. Okay. Hey, I couldn't remember any stories to tell him. Oh. <laughs> I had sat in storytelling sessions. Ah, mm. I couldn't remember any stories to tell him. Mm. I could remember Beauty and the Beast, uh, uh, Cinderella, and all these yeah. kinds of things. But I couldn't remember my own stories. But mm. this is when my son has asked to be introduced to the holdings of our ancestral archives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell him that I have lost the key. Mm. Hey, <laughs> this was going to construct self-identity and all. 
Yeah. And this is when I got the wake up call. Mm. If I cannot tell any stories to him, what will he tell his children? Cinderella. Unfortunately. You see? <laughs> yeah. We thank God for Cinderella. But yeah. what about uh, our, uh, our uh, world war? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because that's right. those are the ones that speaks to who we are. Mm -hmm. So I quickly started, this is what set me on the path of finding the stories. And I saw that finding them is not enough. I must mm -hmm. disseminate it. I mm -hmm. must tell it. Mm -hmm. and, and it feels sometimes it feels like we're actually telling other people's story of course when you talk about the cinderellas and the beauty and the beast we're actually telling other people's story rather than our own story and i i think i i i, I really get that point it's really well yes. um C cecilia's hand is up cecilia would you want to uh, unmute yourself and then ask your question or contribution Hello, Cecilia. Hello, Doc. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much for the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> and Elijah too is here. I had to see his name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I must say thank you for such an insightful um, awakening oh. of our past. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you, you for joining. You, you said something that I would like to learn properly and keep it. You said a good use of the voice can yes. set the mood. Yes. 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 I, 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 it's something I will take with me for a very long time. And yes. Thank yes. You. you see, the meaning of what you say is in how you say it. Yeah. And how you say it, part of it is the voice with which you say it. That is why people will say, I don't like the way he spoke to me. Not mm. the, what he said, actually. It is the how. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, now, hey, why do you greet me like that? Oh, do you have a problem with me? You know, mm. it's just a greeting. But the voice, the tone of voice, not even to talk about facial expression or anything, just the voice tells a lot tells a lot. Mm. And I'll yeah. take the opportunity to also say wanua <laughs> wupa. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are learning. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think uh, we have um, uh, some 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 of us not all everybody on the on the on the page right now speaks tree. So um, I think I missed that. The certain songs that we sang in in Chi, okay, they couldn't they couldn't um, understand. Oh, so, oh. yeah. Um, Maybe the. Uh, oh, so which the, one? Which one? The Crucia uh, and. Oh, okay. Uh, is that and the other a, ones? A certain little duck, fresh was going for a stroll, and as she was going, she met her little friend. She her friend. Ask her this, do you have a handkerchief? And she said to her friend, stop, 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 my friend. What even what I have is more than you can think. Check me out, check me out. There I go. All right. <laughs> hey, I could have been a rapper. This is I, I, this yeah. translation is all from the top of my head. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So apologies to um, apologies to that. Uh, for, and then, yeah, what for, else did I say? Uh, uh, um, oh, I think we translated in Hebrew and then uh, yeah, uh, fireman on You know, there's a, a young man called Firemara. He was like an idiot. Mm. kind of for want mm -hmm. of a better explain a, a better word mm -hmm. yes and they called him fireman and um so he wasn't he was like everybody's help mm. so fire mara will take the children to school and fire mara will bring them back mm. so the song says fire mara takes me there fire mara brings me back fire mara it's my heart 
fatale. Fatale is like um, a, a pancake. Mm -hmm. Fatale is like a pancake that mothers package for their children to go to school with and have it for lunch. Mm -hmm. So on this journey back and forth, Fire Mara will eat the tatale of the children and mm -hmm. blame it on and they say, no, the children ate it themselves. So the mm -hmm. children are now complaining. Fire mm -hmm. Mara takes me there. Fire Mara brings me back. Fire Mara, it's my hot pancake and said mm -hmm. I ate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I'm not sure whether you also did the um, the Konimo song. Um, ah, oh, so Abnai uh, Miss So, uh -huh. did I tell the story in English? Yeah, you did. You, yes. Okay, so yeah, the, did. the song says the husband, when he saw the smoke, he just sang, Abnai, I'm afraid of your fanning. My dear Abna, I fear your, fan, your fanning. My wife, Abna, I am afraid of this fanning. My yeah. wife. That's mm -hmm. all. All right. <laughs> he doesn't okay. say much, but he speaks volumes. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Um, let me see. And that, that that's one thing. When you do the storytelling and you get familiar with it, you become familiar with creating pictures mm -hmm. in your speaking so that you don't get to use a lot of words. Mm. That is what we consider somebody who is eloquent not because you're verbose, but mm. because you know how to use few words mm -hmm. to describe volume. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, minu, minu, um, oh, sorry if I mispronounce your word. Ma, Mawena. Ma, okay. I'm, apologies. <laughs> Mawena uh, says, uh, uh, please, what if the audience can speak only English? Do you enjoy the story as we do i mean with the songs and response and all meaning if if the story is probably was in a local language and then you're transposing it into english does it have the same uh feeling i'm not sure whether that is what hey. i is trying to say yeah but oh mm -hmm. you are calling it local have you now become foreign oh uh, my apologies <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anyway, that was so the joke. I mean, the indigenous language, it's fine. yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, if yeah. if the if a language, if a, a story is in a particular language and then um it's being said in English, does it lose its, its relevance? Um, it, to some uh, extent, it, 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 it depends on the teller, mm -hmm. it depends on the teller. I try as much as possible not to lose the essence, but find the ways in, 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 in communicating the thought mm. in English. Mm. Because what I have come to realize is language has gone beyond Kofi is a boy mm -hmm. and Ama is a girl mm. to represent the vocabulary of thought. Mm -hmm. So, what you're using the English language to say is what is important, not necessarily because it is in English. Because mm. right now, we all want to change this English, but it will take a while, even mm. if we can do it. It will take a while. So we mm. have to find ways of making it work. Mm. Even though we are the only group of people probably the only group of people who think in our mother tongue and have to communicate in another language makes mm. the work twice as hard. But mm. this is what I do, Mawena. If you follow me closely and you know about Bronya Pata, which is my end of year program that Lododo is not mine, it's Lododo Art that does uh, Bronya Pata. It's an end of year storytelling um, event. I tell the stories in English, so that people who have no proficiency in the Ghanaian languages can relate mm. to what is happening, can understand um, 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 the stories that are being told. And just like I translated the rhythms uh, in the stories, I try to do that. 
so mm. that the rhythm is part of the thing. So if I kill the rhythm, the beauty of the narration can somewhat go sour. Mm. And so I try to stay within the rhythm. And an example is what I just did with a crotch Yes, I, I try to do things like that. And so that um, people can um, connect with it. So if you hear that um, Lododo Art is doing Bronya Pata, which is likely to happen in December, don't hesitate to show up because you will sure. understand everything. Sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, this um, African Live Art uh, YouTube channel, and we, of course, connect to various African art instructors uh, share their knowledge on their uh, um, area of expertise and of course connect these information to uh, institutions across the world. Um, if there is no question, then I would um, miss, sorry, yeah, answer Sarah. <laughs> um, <laughs> any, any, any last words? And also if you want to uh, share your uh, social media handles how to connect to you and of course any other projects that are almost okay. about happening okay we lododo art is going to have a storytelling session a storytelling festival in akachi in november Mm. Um, we're calling it um, the Volta Region Storytelling Festival. So wow. we are calling uh, storytellers in the Volta Region. We are inviting people to mm. come and sign up. And there's a host storytelling group that is going to it's going to be three nights of excitement wow. um, um, uh, in November. I don't have the date on the top of my head, but <laughs> I can I can always put it in my social media platform. You will find it. Um, we have you will find uh, as uh, on YouTube channel is Lododo Art um, Foundation. Uh, you will find short stories there. Um, that we are okay. also we are also. I'm also going to add the links down there uh, afterwards. Okay. So. Okay, yeah, on, on we'll thing, have, the, we are also on Instagram, we are on, um, um, Safo, remind me. We are on uh, Instagram, Twitter. we are on our Twitter, we are on um, Facebook, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, we invite and also on all... African Live Art. We are on African Live Art. Why not? <laughs> www.africanliveart.com. Uh, yes, that's, that is, yeah, that's very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so... We are also um, almost always available in the School of Performing Arts. If you don't know where to find me at all, if you're not a social media person, you don't know, come to the School of Performing Arts, go to the theater arts department and ask of Dr. Dogbaji and okay. you will find me. But most people call me Auntie Sarah. All right. And I like that. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, Abigail, Abigail Mali, yeah, says it's, it's always a blessing to listen to you, Doctor Adobaji. Um, That's my I, daughter. I, yeah, <laughs> she's right here. <laughs> uh, soon to be doctor, so we are waiting. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. That's my daughter, so, soon to be Abi Ameli. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you for showing up all the time. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for I joining us today. I thank all of you. Sorry, let me not cut you like that. But I uh -huh. thank all okay. of you for showing up and coming to join in the conversation. You have made it very interesting. Mm -hmm. Elijah from UK. Thank <laughs> you so much. I just sent it to, to Cecilia this uh -huh. evening. And voila, <laughs> you showed up. I'm so glad. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Abigail. I sent it to you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mawena Kokra and <laughs> Bib. Uh, yeah, Bib. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Cecilia and Adalba. Oh, God bless you. You're always there. Frank. Francis. Frankster. Frankster. Yeah, Frank wow, Anantekua, bless your soul. <laughs> Wonderful people. Thanks for coming to make it all very um, um, interesting. Your presence has been uh, very valuable. I'm so yeah. grateful. I'm yeah. so grateful. 
Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, this is a weekly program that we have. And of course, next week, I'm going to be, you know, sending the, um, uh, you know, next discussion on our channels. Uh, so Facebook is African Live Arts. Uh, Instagram is African Live Arts. Um, Twitter, African Live Arts. So you can check it up and then any updates you, we're going to uh, provide to you. If you want, if you want to ask any question, um, you can go to info at africanliveart.com and you can send your questions. Or so of course, um, under the um, YouTube channels, you can also, you know, bring your questions over there we'll uh, uh, respond at our earliest call um you can also reach us on um lododoart.org our web okay. website yes okay lododoart.org let me just indicate it here Lododo art. is it with s or without s without s with our oh. S, lododoart.org. All right. If you want to uh, send us an email, you can send it to lododoarts. That one has an S. Okay. Lododoarts at gmail.com. At gmail.com. All right. All right. All right. So thank you very much, everybody. Most grateful for Bless you. Uh, and if you have not subscribed to our channel, um, please check out uh, African Live Arts do. at YouTube and then just, you know, hit the subscribe uh, subscribe button. And then, um, yeah, you can share the conversation and like it. And then, yeah, we'll keep providing and connecting to different African artists. And on and on we go. Thank you very much. Thank Same you. with Lododo Arts YouTube channel as well. So thank you very much. And uh, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Okay.